Chapter 19 Away on Another Adventure We can't do anything this evening, said Mr. Spells. That's quite certain. Anyway, the first thing to do is to find out where the wandering castle is. Don't you know, said Molly in surprise, as she thought that Mr. Spells knew everything. Well, I know where it was last year and the year before and even last month, said Mr. Spells, but I don't know where it is now. It may have wandered anywhere. Does it move about? asked Peter in amazement. Oh, good gracious, yes, it's always wandering, said the enchanter. One day it may be here, the next day it's somewhere else. Giant Twisty finds that very useful because he's always getting into trouble because of his very bad ways. And it's very convenient to have a castle that can slip away in the night. It's going to be very difficult to find, isn't it, said Molly. I mean, even if we can find out where it is now, it may not be there when we get there was true, but there's a chance it may rest in the same place for some weeks, said Mr. Spells. Winks, what are you doing? Winks jumped. Uh, I was just stirring this stuff in the pot, he said. Look at your hands, thundered Mr. Spells. You've been dipping them in and now see what you've done, you meddlesome little brownie. Winks looked at his hands. Oh dear, they were bright blue. He stared at them in horror. Now you know what your grandmother's pigs must have felt like when you turned them blue, said the enchanter. Well, you keep your hands blue. Every time you look at them, you can say to yourself, I will not meddle, I will not meddle. Winks put his hands into his pockets, looking very sad. Well, children, said Mr. Spells, I think you better leave things to me tonight. I'll do my best to find out where the wandering castle happens to be in the moment, and we will make a good plan to get back the chair and Pixie. Can you come along early tomorrow morning? Yes, we'll ask Mother to let us go out for the day, said Peter. Come on, Molly. Thank you, Mr. Spells, for your help. Goodbye, Mrs. Spells. Goodbye, Cinders. You can go out this door if you'd like, said the Enchanter, and the children suddenly saw a small silver door gleaming in the wall near the window that looked out on the hillside. They were quite sure it had not been there before. Cinders opened it for them. He bowed politely to the children, but dug a claw into Winks, who yelled and shot outside in a hurry. Winks shook a bright blue fist at the cat. Where are we? said Peter, as they walked down the hillside, now filled with shadows as the sun sank low. Well, goodness, look, there's our garden. And so it was, just nearby. How very extraordinary. If only people knew how near their gardens are, to curious and wonderful places, well, how surprised they would be, said Molly, walking in at their side gate and going to the playroom. Well, we can take that shortcut tomorrow, I suppose. I do wonder how it is that the sea is outside that other window. I just simply can't understand that. They said goodbye to Winks, who had tried in vain to wash the blue off of his hands under the garden tap. And then off they went to ask their mother if they could have the whole day to themselves tomorrow. She said, yes, yes, of course they could. It would do them good to go into the country in the lovely summer weather they were having now. Well, I don't know what Mother would say if she knew that we actually were going to go hunt for Giant Twisty in his wandering castle, said Peter. I suppose she just wouldn't believe it. The next day, the children had breakfast very early indeed, and then they set off down the garden to collect Winks. His hands were still as blue as ever, and so he had put on a pair of gloves. Oh, you've borrowed them from my biggest doll, Winks, said Molly. Well, you should have asked my permission first. And I would have said, no, you certainly may not use them. Yes, I felt sure that you wouldn't let me, said Winks. That's why I didn't ask you. I'll take good care of them, Molly. Really, I will. Your dolly doesn't mind a bit. They went out of the garden gate and they looked around. Now, where was that shortcut now? They couldn't find it at all, but Winks spotted it. I've got good eyes for seeing strange things, better than you, he said. I can see a little shining path in the grass that you really can't see. Follow me. Well, you must be right, said Peter, as Winks led them straight over the grass to the same trees on the same sunny hillside as they had seen the day before. Well, there's the little silver door. 
cinders opened it as they came nearby. Winks shot in so quickly that he hadn't have he didn't have time to scratch the brownie, although he did try. Mr. Spells was there, surrounded by papers and old books of all kinds. My mother is still asleep in bed, he said. I'm glad you're early. We can start off straight away. Oh, have you found out where the wandering castle is? asked Molly in delight. Did your magic books tell you? They helped, said Mr. Spells, and, Cinder and Cinders and I did a little find out spell that we know. Wandering Castle is now on the island belonging to the giant small one, Twisty's brother. Giant small one? That's a funny name, said Molly. Not really, said Mr. Spells. He's small for a giant, that's all. Well, we'd better get started. Well, how can we get to an island, said Peter. We haven't a wishing chair to fly over the sea. Oh, that doesn't matter, said Mr. Spells. Cinders has been getting my ship ready. He pointed to the window so that, that so surprisingly looked out onto the sea. The children stared in wonder and delight. A most beautiful ship rocked gently on the calm blue waters, a picture of loveliness with its big white sails. Molly cried out in joy, what a beauty. And look, it's called the Molly. That's just a little compliment to you, said Mr. Spells with a smile. Also, it's supposed to be lucky to sail in a ship bearing one of the passengers' names. Well, shall we set off? The wind is just right. Cinders opened a window. Just outside was a stone ledge with steps leading down to a tiny jetty. Cinders went first and helped Molly down. They all stepped aboard the beautiful white sailed ship. Mr. Spills took the tiller. Blow and blow and on we'll go over the waters blue, he sang. And the white ship leapt forward like a bird. Is that a spell that you sang, said Molly? No, it's just a little song, said Mr. Spells, and he began to sing again while the ship sailed lightly over the waters. Blow, wind, blow. The children and Winks enjoyed it very much. Molly trailed her hand in the water. Did we bring any food? asked Molly suddenly. I'm hungry. No, said Mr. Spells, and everyone at once looked rather gloomy. Enchanters don't need to, he said. I always carry a spell in my pocket that I use when I need any food. And so soon they were all eating and drinking as the ship sped on and on. For two hours the ship sailed on, and then Cinders gave a shout, Land ahoy! It's the island, Mr. Spells, sir. Aha, said the enchanter. Now we must be a bit careful. They all looked hard at the island that was rapidly coming nearer as the ship sped over the water. It didn't look very big. It was crowded with tall buildings, some of them looking like palaces and some like castles. Which is the wandering castle, I wonder, said Molly. Can't possibly tell, said Mr. Spells. Now, here we go toward this little jetty. We'll land there. You'll have to watch out a bit because several giants live here and you don't want to be stepped on like ants. Molly didn't like the sound of that very much. She was determined to keep very close to Mr. Spells. Cinders was left with the ship, much to Winx's relief. They all set off up an extremely wide street. We shall be all right if we keep to the narrow pavement that runs beside the walls of the building, said Mr. Spells, guiding them to one. There are plenty of small folk living here as well as giants. And so there were. Pixies and brownies and goblins and elves, but there were also giants and Molly suddenly saw a most enormous foot followed by another one walking down the street. She shrank close to Mr. Spells. When the giant came by, the children tried to see up to the top of him, but he was too tall. That is a large sized giant, said Mr. Spells. I know him, nice fellow, called Too Big. Here's a smaller one. It was exciting and extraordinary to see giants walking about. Mr. Spells guided them to a palace, not quite so tall as some of the buildings. Ah, this is where Giant Small One lives, the giant that the island belongs to. Come along, we will ask him where about his, brother is, his brother's wandering castle is. Don't be afraid, I am much more powerful than he is, and he knows it. 
and so they went up a long, long flight of steps. At the top was a big open door leading into a vast hall. At the end of the hall sat a giant, but he was such a small one that he wasn't really more than twice the size of the enchanter himself. Advance, Mr. Spells, and pay your respects to giant small one, boomed an enormous voice from somewhere. And Mr. Spells boldly went forward. Now to find out what they all wanted to know. And when we next read together, it will be chapter 20, Wandering Castle at Last. <laughs>